so programmed to watch everything on TV and you don't believe anything until you see it on TV that's the reason why the majority of you all are not going to make it and the majority of you all are going to perish but this is Linus and Rise and um, I haven't been on for a, quite a while probably a couple of weeks or more um, I've been having some problems with my um, uh, with my laptop and um, it's not working at the moment so <clears throat> I had to I put that down and you know I had to transition out to the living room um, so I had to kind of read, readjust myself um, to the new area where I'm working in which is still good because I'm still in the compass of my home thanks be to the most high and I even might have a laptop that I can um, that I can um, use and as I had said before in one of my segments um, you know when you are um, fighting a spiritual warfare and then you're on the battlefield and you're standing with the Father in heaven and Yeshua and you um, you are uh, into this truth and you have um, accepted this truth for what it is uh, you just you can't go back to where things uh, where they used to be and when you are in the spiritual truth and you look at life to uh, with your spiritual eyes you are in um you're in battle, and um, the war is on, and it's not just different things that goes on that will go on um, in your life. Um, <clears throat> many people who are on the spiritual battlefield understand what I'm talking about. I mean, just just things that go on that shouldn't go on, right? The things that fall apart that shouldn't be falling apart, but it does because that's how it goes. Because they're trying to hinder us and stop us from bringing the good word of the Father in heaven and Yeshua. And, and opening people's eyes to truth. They don't want you to do that. They don't want us to do that. But it's going to be done. Because um, no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. And greater is he in me than he in the world. Um, so my segment tonight is going to be about the manipulation of the black people. Uh, which leads to their disintegration. Um, and the main tool that is used to... Um, manipulate black people and mislead black people it starts in the classroom and um, that is by far the main place that things starts now manipulation um, is one thing okay um, the educational platform is one main vehicle that these powers to be have used from a very long time now, a lot of times when we talk about powers to be, we're talking about not just these, these Illuminati people, these justice people, the people in the, the Vatican, you know, all of them are really in the same boat together, okay? I'm talking about the devil. I mean, he is behind all of this, 
Okay, I mean, I'm listening to David Icke interview this gentleman. His name is um, um, Credo Mutua. And um, he has a very interesting story. He really does. Um, and listening to him, you know, talk about um, these reptilians that came to Africa, started out in Africa, and made these African people believe that they were their gods, uh, which they are not. You know, they're just the damn devil that came to these people. Um, and these people did not have the education or the level of understanding to know that these these so-called reptilian gods were really just the devil in disguise, you know, and um, <clears throat> only there to mislead them, okay? So, um, you know, this is where all these things begin. Um, these reptilians, they are, um, they are demons, you know. They are the fallen ones. Uh, they're off the, 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 um, the seed of the fallen of the fallen Nephilim um, that <clears throat> is here on earth um, so my whole point to this whole segment um, talking about the manipulation of black people which leads to their, um, to their disintegration and um, it is by far the major tool that is being used to continue to mislead people along with mainstream media okay so my initial conversation I've been trying to do the segment this is probably like take 16 for all I know I'm, excuse me because I'm drinking my tea in the process um, trying to get the segment done and I am determined to do it. All right. Now, along my educational career, um, there's a couple of books that I considered that was well worth. They were they were, they were well worthy of speaking on. And um, it, to me, it gave the perfect description of the miseducated Negro in this country, and even those so-called black people who call themselves educated. You know. I don't make, it's not a big deal for me to say that I'm educated, all right? I'd rather say that I'm wise as opposed to educated because, excuse me, when you say that you're educated in, in this country, for the most part, you've just been indoctrinated into this country. You've been indoctrinated to see things and respond to things a certain way. When I look at people walking around and moving among among me, among myself, you know, in, in the area where I live and amongst where I go, everyone looks so extremely robotic. Everyone feels the same way pretty much, thinks the same way, and perceives life the same way. And that's exactly what the educational system was meant to do, okay? And when you have someone who think uh, with your right side of their brain and who think along with common sense, uh, you know, I'm not always well looked on, right? I'm not really highly favored because I've noticed one of my problems I have with my black people in this country that are so mis misled and miseducated, they seem to fail to realize that they're so much miseducated, they have been miseducated against their own kind. And that is something that is well known among us as a black people. In fact, that is what kicked off my segment for four, what is 400 years of slavery to the black man. You know, we have our black people now, especially the, 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 the generations that who have quite disassociated themselves with their black history because the majority of black history have not been taught in, in classrooms uh, at least not in the in the in the true content that it should be taught, okay? Because all I knew, all they said to me, um, I re as I re recall, about slavery um, that was mentioned in the history books was not mentioned in the content. I'm going to play a little clip clip for you. It was not mentioned in the content that this gentleman is describing the atrocities that was done to black people. 
um, in the 40s, the 50s, the 30s. I mean, you know, the reason why I'm saying the 40s and 30s, there was atrocities that were done to black people from the moment they went into slavery, okay? So there's two couple of things that I'm separating now. I'm, there's, you have the, 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 the heinousness and the atrocities that were done to black people in slavery, but I'm talking about the 1930s, the 40s, and the 50s because that's when we were supposedly freed, right? But these things were still going on with us, against us. That we were not truly free, okay? Um, we were still oppressed, and to this day, we are still oppressed. Many people, many black people may have the imagination that you are free, but you are not free, okay? Um, we still, as a black people, are, are considered uh, poor. We are still considered less than a human. We are still considered um, people that um, are, are inferior status. So it really makes me angry when I hear my own black people, you know, uh, try to disassociate themselves with some, if we have like a black uprising or a black, um, uh, something that's social, that's centralized, that is centralizing on black people, you would have our own black people would disassociate themselves from that. And you see, this is the point that I'm talking about. We are so trained to disassociate ourselves from ourselves. And that was the whole problem I had with the sister that who she's a wakeful, wakefulness um, theology. Um, she's you know she, we had we had a, 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 a big a bit of mixed words in regards to the black Israelites. She didn't want to associate herself with that, and you know she actually I, you know I had stopped listening to her and I started back listening to her. And as soon as I started back listening to her, she goes again to start talking about the black Israelites, about the black Israelites um, in America. But she feels little as you know. This black Israelite thing is not just happening in America. It is happening all over the world. Okay? There's a lot of black people, women and men, that are waking up to this Israelite calling because the time is now for us to do this. Okay? All right. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to play a clip for you guys to listen to. Um, and the way that they... Um, Label this particular um, YouTube that I was that I, I want to play for you all. It's called the White Race Have to Pay for This. And where was the rest of the nation protects protesting against this? Okay. Um, it's actually talking about um, I'm sorry. This is talking about and I'm going to let you all hear it about the um, injustices that were done to black people. In, it looks like around the 50s and the 60s, if I'm not mistaken, based on some of the pictures that I'm seeing. I am going to put this YouTube in, this, in my segment so you guys can go there and watch it for yourself. It's about four minutes long, and it's interesting. And it tells you the truth, because this is what this channel is about. It's about the truth. So let me, I'm going to read a couple of the, um, I want to take the opportunity to read some of the inserts in the book. The Miseducation of the Negro, and again, it's by Carter Goodwin Woodson. All right? It says, it's, it's, class, it's classed as the original best-selling classic. All right, so let's begin with um, The Miseducated Negro, and this is on page five. If the white man wants to hold on to this philosophy of um, attitude about the educational system... He says, let him do so. But the Negro so far, as he is able, should develop and carry out a program of his own. For example, the philosophy and ethic, ethics resulting from our educational system have justified slavery, peonage, segregation, and lynching. The oppressor has the right to exploit, to handicap, and to kill the oppressed. Negroes, daily educated in the tenets of such religion, of the strong have accepted the status of the weak as divinely ordained and during the last two generations of the anomalous freedom they have done practically nothing to change it. No systematic effort towards change has been possible for taught the same economics, history, philosophy, literature and religion which have established the present code of morals. The Negro mind has been brought under the control of his oppressor. 
The problem of holding the Negro down, therefore, is easily solved. When you control a man's thinking, you do not have to worry about his actions. You do not have to tell him not to stand here or to go yonder. He will find his proper place and will stay in it. You do not need to send him to the back door, for he will go without being told. In fact, if there is no back door, he will cut one for his special benefits, for his education make it necessary. Again, I hope you all are able to understand what, this gen- what uh, Mr. Woodson is pointing out. So black people who are miseducated, excuse me, they do not have to, the white man do not have to do anything to him because he has been trained to do it for him already. The difficulty is that the educated Negro is compelled to live and move among his own people whom he has been taught to despise. Again, so black people, you have been taught to despise your own people. And the majority of you all do not even see and understand this. Again, he goes on, as a rule, therefore, the educated Negro prefers to buy his food from a white grocer because he has been taught that the Negro is not clean. And it does not matter how often the Negro washes his hands, then he cannot clean them. And it does not matter how often a white man uses his hand, he cannot soil them. And that is so ever very true. All right. Here's another thing I wanted to point out. This crusade is much more important than the anti-lynching movement because there would be no lynching if it did not start in the classroom. Okay, so very true. To be more explicit, we may go to the seat of the trouble. Our most widely known scholars have been trained in universities outside of the South, Northern, and Western institutions. However, have had no time to deal with matters which concern the Negro especially. They must direct their attention to the problems of the majority of their I'm sorry, their constituents. And too often they have simulated their prejudice by referring to the Negro as unworthy of consideration. Most of what these universities have offered as language, mathematics, and science may have served a good purpose, but much of what they have taught as economics, history, literature, religion, and philosophy is propaganda that involves a waste of time and misdirected the Negro thus trained. Another important point I wanted to point out, in the schools of business administration, Negroes are trained exclusively in in the psychology and economics of Wall Street and are therefore made to despise the opportunities to run ice wagons, push banana carts, and sell peanuts among their own people. Foreigners who have not studied economics but have studied Negroes take up this business and grow rich. And that goes to explain the um, uh, the reason why black people have a very hard time selling to their own kind, right? Because their own kind have been trained not to buy or purchase anything from them, but they have been trained to purchase from the white man and every other race of ethnicity but other than your own. Um, <clears throat> and this is, I wanted to point this out because to me this, this talks volumes to a lot of our so-called educated black people. These educated people, however, decry any such thing as race consciousness. And in some respects, they are right. They do not like to hear such expressions as Negro literature, Negro poetry, African art, or black art, or thinking black and rough and roughly speaking we must concede that such things do not exist okay um, <laughs> here is another thing that he pointed out which speaks to why some of our own black people um, think the way they do and act the way they act. The highly educated contends, moreover, that when the Negro emphasizes these things, he invites racial dis- discrimination. Excuse me for one second, please. I'll be right back. I'm sorry, I'm back. He invites racial dis- discrimination by recognizing such differentiations of the race. 
The thought that the Negro is one thing and the white man another is the stock and trade argument of the Caucasian to justify segregation. Okay. Um, another thing that I wanted to point out Right, on page 19. In history, of course, the Negro had no place in this curriculum. He was pictured as a human being of the lower order, unable to subject passion to reason, and therefore useful only when made the hue of word and the draw of waters for others. No thought was given to the history of Africa except so far as it had been a field of exploitation for the Caucasian. You might study the Negro as it was offered in our system from the elementary school throughout the university. You would never hear Africa mentioned except in the negative. You would never thereby learn that Africans first domesticated the sheep, goat, and cow, developed the idea of trial by jury, produced the first string instrument, and gave the world its greatest boom in the discovery of iron. You would never know the prior that prior to the Mohidians' invasion that the Mohidians, I'm sorry, the Mohidian, Mo, Mo, Mohid, Mohidian invasion. I'm think, I think I'm saying that right, people. I believe it's Mohidian. I'm saying Mohidian, but it's more like Mohidian, like Mohammedan. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that right. Bear with me, guys. Mohidian invasion about 1000 AD. These natives in the heart of Africa had developed a, developed a powerful kingdom which were later organized as the Songhai Empire on the order of that of the Romans and boasting of similar grandeur. Now ideally, this is just a brief what he touched about African history. There's really much more and it's much more in depth, but the majority of it has been kept from black people. I mean, we have more black scholars now out there that knows about this information, but the overall masses of black people do not know or are completely unaware of their history and uh, their heritage of where they connect to and where they and where they are from. Okay. All right. Um, here's one more thing I wanted to point out. The Negro thus placed in charge would be the product of the same system that would show no more conception of the task at hand than do the whites who have educated them and shaped their minds as they would have them function. Negro educators of the day may have more sympathy and interest in the race than the whites now exploiting Negro institutions as educators. But the former have no more vision than their counter competitors. Taught from books of the same biases, excuse me, trained by Caucasians of the same prejudice or by Negroes of enslaved minds. One generation of Negro teachers after another have served for no higher purpose than to do what they have told to do. Okay, so I pointed out some very significant parts in this book that explains the manipulation and um, the miseducation of Negro black people in our country today. One of the bigger problems that I am seeing right now is I just kind of like gave you guys um, um, a highlight and um, a brief you, a brief insight um, on the book of Miseducation of Negro and, and to tell you how bad black people are so miseducated and so enslaved in their mind about really what's going on in this world. This is just... Uh, I don't think we even tip in the iceberg. Um, the major problem that I'm seeing now for our black people um, in this educational system that we still have, um, that, that we that we still have that is continuing to mislead our children. Um, not just necessarily misleading our children, but they are continuing to indoctrinate. They're indoctrinating our children uh, constant, consistently. The system is, you know, this system is continually repeating itself. 
Each generation uh, is continually being more misled, more enslaved, and <clears throat> not being told the truth of their place of origin. Okay? Now, many times I've said before, in order for you to know your history, you have to go back to your past. I don't care what no one no one says. For you to know where you are today and why you are here and where you are, how did you end up to this place? How did you end up here? You have to go back. Now the problem in going back is where and how you go back, okay? And what tools do you use to go back with? Now many people want to discredit and disapprove the Bible. And that is where they go wrong. And that's why black people are so lost. Because they refuse to acknowledge the Bible as their history. They've been also been trained not to believe the Bible. I, you see, I think here's what happened. I've been listening to David Icke interview this um, gentleman called Credo Muta. Now, he mentioned in this um, interview that the African people in South Africa was told by these uh, reptilian gods which most of all you all should be aware of right now these reptilian gods that first came to Africa I mean these reptilian gods were probably always there but these people weren't aware that they were there but once they made themselves known to these African people they were told about the Caucasians coming to Africa to enslave them and also they were told um, not to resist the missionaries who were bringing this Christian faith and uh, we, they were to accept these people and not to fight them okay <clears throat> so the whole point here is uh, with black with the black people at that time, when you look at the, 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 the whole chain of events, with these reptilians presenting themselves to be gods to these people, okay, and being told to accept these Christian uh, missionaries coming into Africa, you can just clearly see. Now, for most of you, I may not be able to see, but I've been studying um, a lot of these different um, pe um, race of people in different set settings from the, um, I believe they're called, um, not just the, the Mayans, I'm sorry, thank you, Father. The Mayans, uh, uh, now these, um, I'm listening to Credo Matua, um, I believe his name is Matua. Let me look at his name again. Bear with me, guys. Matua, yeah, Credo Matua. Um, <clears throat> he, you know, he speaks about these reptilians present themselves as gods and they're white, their skin was white, okay that tells me one, either these are the demigods or they are offsprings of the fallen angels now I made a connection with these white, so called white gods to the book of Enoch okay um, it explains a lot of things. Now, my whole connection here with these reptilian gods, it all again leads back to the devil. Okay? When you have these people, these reptilian gods that immersed, that appear on the earth, they not only appeared there in South Africa, they appeared also in Egypt with the Egyptians, they are uh, they they're interbred with the human race trying to preserve their own life is what they're trying to do because they were cursed. They, I mean, for them coming out and having the skin that they have based on uh, Credo Matua it describes these, rep these reptilians and these reptilians were in this world from a long time and, I, and they are connected to the fallen angels and they're connected to the devil. Okay? They have no connection. They, they, these reptilians are not of an entity of, of um, that comes from heaven. There are no association with the Father in heaven. If they're coming out of the earth, 
Okay, anything that comes out of a hole out of the earth, it is definitely associated with the devil. Okay? Everything that comes from the Father in heaven always ascended from the top, from the above us, not below us. Okay, so th this is the problem here, people. All right? Um, I know I went into a long elaboration around this, and the reason why I'm talking about it is because um, it draws reference to the deception and how the devil set the stage so that this, the same book, the same Bible that um, have been um, provided for the black Israelites would be the same book that will be uh, rejected by the Israelites because the whole purpose of this is to not um, allow the Israelites to know who they are and to know that they are the children of Yahuwah. Okay, we are the children of Yahuwah. This is to really discredit that. And this is what the devil's whole purpose and agenda has been. Now, I want to take the opportunity um, to have you guys listen to um, a, a, a segment that speaks to <clears throat> black... Um, atrocities that happened I want to believe it had to happen around in, in, in the 50s in the south the 40s and the 50s with black m men and women um, who were still experiencing a lot of um, heinousness and atrocities against them now this is the history that you do not get in the classroom that was not told in the classroom it's not told in the history books some history books yes but not told, uh, it's not brought into the mainstream educational system and it's not a part of our curriculum as it should be, okay? So please take a moment to listen to it, okay? Hang on. Black people was so deeply internalized and reinforced by church and government and business that black town halls were burned black churches were burned. And if a black man defended himself against the aggressor, against a white man, not only could he be killed, but his family could be killed. He might be subjected to hours of torture. In some cases, more than one, a black man was tied on a log and burned from his feet up so that an extensive crowd of people could take pleasure out of the screams and the horror. At his home near Savannah, Georgia, James Allen has collected a photographic record of racial violence in the South. For the past 20 years, he's found horrifying pictures in the family albums of ordinary Southern homes. Many are postcards that were mass produced as souvenirs. Some of these images were printed in the tens of thousands and sold for a dime or a dollar a piece. Some of the postcards tell you where to write and the discounts you'll get if you buy one, ten, or a hundred. They were sold in drugstores and pharmacies. They were sold on the street. I purchased a photograph from a woman. The photographer sold them door to door. Her mother bought the image for two bucks. The murder that is of particular interest to me was of a 17-year-old boy by the name of Jess Washington in Waco, Texas, in 1916. He was meant seriously mentally challenged. The wife of the farmer that he worked for was found dead. He was arrested. He was brought to trial. The trial took from 10 until 12. And when the jury came back at noon and found him guilty, someone in the courtroom and it could have been, would have been anyone in the courtroom, 
screamed out, get that nigger. In one of the worst and cruelest treatments of a human being began. Jess was kicked down out of the courthouse, down the back steps where a crowd of several hundred was waiting for him. They put a chain on his neck. There were 16,000 people crowding the street to watch this boy be tortured. Jess was tied to the chain over a branch of a tree. The fire was started. They raised Jess from the fire up into the air so that the crowd could see him. There were cheers, like at a football game, cheering the torturers on. When Jess tried to climb up the chain, hand by hand, they cut his fingers off one by one so that all he could do was slap at the chain. They lowered him back down in the fire. A man came up and castrated him. Another man kept a pole so that he couldn't crawl out of the fire. And time and again, they pulled him up to keep him from dying so that the crowd could be satisfied until he finally died. segment that I let you guys listen to. Do you th honestly think if we had stories being told to us in the truth that is being told what you just listened to, do you honestly think that we would be in the state that we're in right now? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. We would not be living in the capacity that we're living in right now. We would not have black people so against one another. We would not have black people so fooled and so enslaved in their minds and so always being uh, told where to go and how to live. Uh, you know, we would stand up for ourselves a little bit more, you know, efficiently, a little bit more admirably, you know, fighting for our rights. The other thing, too, um... And listening to this segment, I mean, this is, you know, this segment I'm listening to, I not only, I, I, when I was um, in, uh, while I was in college and, you know, um, entering my first of my um, African classes, and some of these professors were brave enough to really show some things that um, was really mind-blowing, and it blew me away. And as I said before, from the moment I got into that class, from the moment I started, I mean, I didn't think I never stopped crying because it was so overwhelming. And I couldn't believe um, what I was seeing. And based on the description of what slavery was told to me in the school books, it was nothing like what I was seeing, okay, and what you all are hearing now, right? So, you know, I'm just trying to get, let, my, you know, let black people understand the magnitude of their history, which they continue to sweep under the, the carpet. You know, and the biggest thing that I say to people, to black people, why is it that no one ever asks us the question, why did black people go into slavery? Why did we go into slavery? Because I think when you answer that, when you ask that question and you start asking that question, I think it's going to lead you to the reason of why we went into slavery and who we really are. Now, I have about five minutes left in this segment, um, and I am going to have to make this a part two segment because there's other things that I wanted to talk about. And one of the things that I w had mentioned that I did not get to emphasize is that um, I think I did mention it, but I'm going to re-mention it again. It's the demoralization of our lives. And it is being done through the classroom. Okay, I think in the book, he, him, he himself even mentioned, um, Goodson even mentions how that economics, history, philosophy, literature, and religion 
which have established the present code of morals, okay? Our education is what shape our morals, all right? And um, based on where we are right now and the times that we're living in, um, I want to really try to wake up my black family and my black mothers. And the reason why I say black mothers is because I know that the majority of mothers out there are single parents. And <clears throat> the, the fact that you all are single parents the majority of you all, almost all of you all, are not taking a second look at this educational system. You are not taking into consideration what your children are being taught in the schools and what is being what they are being exposed to. Um, you know, this is very serious. It is by far the the destruction of our moral morality that we have held on to. Now, when, we, when you have a people that do not have any morals or no kind of morality or, or, or not even trying to uphold any kind of morality, then you will have a people that is most likely are going to be destroyed, okay? Because we are living in a world now that good has become evil and evil has become good. And they are slowly taking away your moral character if you even have it any of it left they are taking it away they are slowly demoralizing you the majority of you all are already demoralized you have black young women that are on twitter that are um, giving away their vagina you have black women out there are doing some very degrading things have been doing degrading things for some time i know nothing that is being done it has not been done before as king solomon said there's nothing new under the sun but at the same time, we as a people, we have to start looking at these things and calling these things out. We have to start saying it's okay or closing our eyes or turning our heads away and not acknowledging the wrong that is going on around us. And it is destroying us as a people. In fact, it is destroying your children. Okay, the longer you keep allowing your children to be educated in these in this educating educating system, educational system, you are demoralizing your children and you are actually only leading them, they are being led into the hole of hell. Okay, the hell is of hole or the hole of hell if I'm saying that in the right way. Okay, because when you have a group of people that do not hold or have any kind of morals about themselves, there are a people that are going to be totally um, desecrated and going to be led completely astray because they have nothing that keeps them, keep their character in, ch in check, okay? I know that we are being told now that it seems like, you know, we don't, um, we cannot speak out about anything because everything that is wrong is not right, Okay? Um, but you see, unfortunately for myself, I happen to be one of those persons I'm going to speak out. As long as the most f high gives me breath and strength, uh, and I have strength in Yeshua who, who, lives in, who lives in me, I'm going to speak out against it. I'm going to speak out against it, and I'm also going to deny it, and um, I oppose, I'm going to oppose it as long as the Father gives me health and strength to do so. Um, I'm going to stop this segment now because I don't, I don't have much time left to really go into any more um, discussion about the manipulation of black people, which leads to the, the, um, the, the disintegration. So I'm going to let you listen to the rest of um, Stephen Marley. This is about mind control. People, stop letting these TV and this educational system shape your minds. You need to take control of your own thinking. You need to think for yourself. Peace be unto you. Shalom to my Israelite family. Blessed are all of those out there that are listening and care about your life. All praises unto Yahuwah. An invention, I just start to search. Go cold and 